Now in this question, which is worth five marks, we're given that the points P and Q have coordinates minus one, six, and nine, zero, respectively. And what we've got to do is find the equation of the perpendicular line, which is called L, through the midpoint of PQ. And we've got to give our answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C are integers, that is whole numbers. Now to appreciate this question, what I would encourage you to do is to draw a quick sketch. I'd encourage you to do that for any coordinate geometry question, in fact, because it just gives you a feel for the problem and it also allows you to see whether you have a sensible answer. So, we've got our axes X and Y and we're going to label the points P at minus one, six, minus one that way, six units up, let's pretend it's somewhere around there. So, P is at the point minus one, six. Q is at the point nine zero, so we'll go nine across that way, assume it's there, and that'll be our point Q with coordinates nine zero. Okay, so we've got P and Q, and we've got a line that's perpendicular to PQ passing through the midpoint. Well, if we imagine then that this is our midpoint of PQ, let's just call it, say, M. A perpendicular line then is one at right angles, so we're looking at a line coming down through here, something like this, okay? It's at right angles, 90 degrees. Now, if we're to find the equation of this line, any line has the form y equals mx plus c, but y equals mx plus c is not the most useful form of equation of a straight line when you're working it out. No, the better form to use is y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. You'll find me using this the majority of the time when we've got to find equations of lines. x1, y1 is a point on this line, and it's going to be this point m in a moment. We're going to need to find it out, okay? And m here is the gradient of this line. And we can get that quite easily by working out the gradient of this line and then using the perpendicular gradient rule. Remember, the product of the two gradients comes to negative one. Okay, well, we can make a start on this now. First of all, then, we need to get our x1, y1, which is the coordinates of the midpoint of this line. So we'll just start off then with the midpoint. And we've got it labeled as M. So if we're working out the midpoint, to get the midpoint, you should already know that you have to find the mean of the X coordinates and the mean of the Y coordinates. By that, I mean that you add the two X coordinates together and divide by two and do the same for the Y coordinates. So we'd have minus one plus nine. Let's just write that down, minus one plus nine. And that's the all divided by two. And for the y coordinate, it'll be 6 plus 0, okay, all over 2. And being a coordinate, we should put that in brackets. Now, normally I would suggest we write down the page, but I'm going to have to write across because there's limited room for this one. So 9 minus 1 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And for the y coordinate, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we've got a coordinate. 4, 3. Let's just update the diagram then with that 4, 3. And you can see that looks reasonable. If I'd made an error here and just called that, say, minus 4, without a diagram, I wouldn't really be able to appreciate that it looked wrong. So that's one reason for drawing a sketch. 4, 3 then is that point. Now that I've got that, I need to get the gradient. And to do that, I've got to first of all work out the gradient of PQ. So We'll come in here with an intro, gradient of PQ. What does it equal? Well, to get gradient, you should know that it's the difference in the Y coordinates divided by the difference in the X coordinates. So in other words, it can be six minus zero. That's the difference in the Y coordinates divided by the difference in the X coordinates. I started with six, so I must make sure I start with the minus one. So it's minus one, minus, and then I look at this value and I've got nine. Okay, so 
we end up with 6 over minus 10 or minus 6 tenths which reduces down, cancels down to minus 3 fifths and again we can see that we've got a negative gradient which seems reasonable. Now you didn't have to do 6 minus 0 over minus 1 minus 9 just experiment yourself. You can always start with this y value, 0 minus 6 divided by 9 minus minus 1. You should find you still get minus 3 fifths. Okay, so we've got the gradient of PQ. That means we've now in a position to get the gradient of this line, which was called L. So we can say that therefore gradient of L equals, and we should know then that the product of the two gradients comes to minus 1. That is, if we multiply them together, we get minus 1. And this is a simple rule. All you need to do then is just invert your fraction and switch the sign. So we've got a minus, so we've got a plus now. If we switch the sign, invert the fraction, you just got 5 thirds. So if you multiplied 5 thirds with minus 3 fifths, you'd get minus 1 product of the gradients gives minus 1 when they're perpendicular. Right, well we've got M now. We've got everything we need to get the equation of L. So, give an introduction. Just don't write down what that line is, okay? Just give an introduction so the reader gets some idea what we're doing. So, we can say therefore equation of L is, okay? not equals, just is. What is it? Well, it's going to be y minus y1, y1 being the 3, equals m, the gradient. The gradient of L is 5 thirds, and that's being multiplied by x minus x1, x1 being the 4. Now, all we need to do now is just multiply both sides by 3. So we get 3y minus 9, because there's two terms there, but there's one term here, so when you multiply this term by 3, you just get 5 bracket x minus 4, the 3's cancel. So expanding 5 bracket x minus 4 gives us 5x minus 20. Now we're so close to this format that we are expected to give, it's got to start with ax, so all I need to do, we'll just say it follows that, all I need to do is subtract 3y and add 9 to both sides, so I get 5x minus 3y, and then if I add 9 to the minus 20, I end up with minus 11, and that equals 0. And there's our format, ax plus by plus c equals 0. And if we had to state, not that we're being asked the values of a, b, and c, but if we did, a would be the 5, b would be minus 3, and c would be the minus 11. Alright?